Uh, it's really about how our technology is changing and how our applications are changing. Um, we all, somewhere along the line, have seen uh, any kind of real-time application shift from the typical models that we have provided in IT for many, many years to a more real-time, more uh, select-as-a-service type of application. And our expectations from our consumers have changed radically from what we used to provide you know, in, in the past 10 years, or maybe the past 15 years, and then in the past two or three. A lot of those things have been because of what we call innovative IT, and that innovative IT has a tendency to to surround itself with all kinds of different types of access methods, uh, things like your iPhone, your your Android device, the Apple Watch, the the Google Watch, um, your typical web browsers and other types of applications that you use day to day to do simple things like buy a cup of coffee at Starbucks or go out and, and order something from Amazon or going out and getting information from your bank or from your investment house. All of these things have now evolved to be very much an easily consumable service that these individual types of application providers, these types of uh, individual IT infrastructures have to produce. But that has forced a very radical change in their IT environment. And they've had to think about how you service that innovative IT versus the industrialized IT that we all know and love. Yeah, we expect that you know we have access to our applications. We expect that they are secure. We expect that the data is available to us real time. We expect that when we present that information to whomever consumes it, whether it's consumed inside or outside of the IT infrastructure, that all of the information is right, ready, whenever someone asks. And there has been a certain amount of chafing in that thought process because innovative IT, they want to get stuff out in people's hands as quickly as possible. I'll give you a good example. I use Lyft every so often to take me from the airport to wherever I go. In the past six weeks, Lyft has updated their uh, iPhone application six times, once a week, adding new things, which means that their innovative IT thought process, whenever they come up with a new idea, whenever they want to go and do something different or present something different to their consumer, it literally is at the speed of light. But their back-end IT, their, in their industrialized IT, has to facilitate what actually gets into that innovation. So there is this thought process of, I've got to move, I've got to move, I've got to move to be competitive in the marketplace, and the IT infrastructures in the back-end must continue to conform and must continue to provide that same thought process of service because it doesn't make any difference where those things come from. It has to be safe, it has to be secure, it has to follow the same types of things that we expect all of our IT infrastructures to provide, especially when we think about compliance and all of the other things that we do. To give you a better idea of some of the new innovative things that we talk about, these are some interesting uh, little pieces of factoids that we have been looking at for that innovative IT. And a perfect example, the third one from the left-hand side in the top row, the largest taxi company in the world owns no taxes. Now, that's an interesting statement. Most people go, well, who would that be? Well, that's Uber. But the thought process is, is that this, this innovative IT is really bringing the, this thought process of having easy-to-access assets that you don't own available at your fingertips. Even the one to the right in the upper right-hand corner of the first line, the largest room rental company in the world, owns no buildings and is still valued at $20 billion U.S. That is Airbnb. There's still the thought process that this digital world continues to evolve, that this continually makes the move from the traditional IT thought process and the traditional way we deploy applications to this more uh, easily consumable, quick-to-market type of thought process that we are now trying to embrace. So the question becomes, how do you actually bridge that gap? How do you keep that digital business resolution going 
how do you keep innovating? How do you keep getting integrated solutions in this environment? Because ultimately, we all know one thing. Speed is king. If you don't have that application in your person's hands, like Lyft, and their updates every week for the past six weeks, if you don't have that capability, you fall behind. But when we think of speed being king, doing it fast is a wonderful idea. But the problem is, is that doing it fast doesn't necessarily mean it's safe, and we really want to make it safe. And that's where we start thinking about how we link together this thought process of innovative applications and innovative IT to the industrialized IT infrastructures that we all need to have to make sure that things get done the right way. That's where Control-M plays a very large role in how things happen in both the innovative and the industrialized IT thought process. Now, granted, Control-M has been in the marketplace for over 30 years now, and it has, uh, at, at this point, at its ninth major release. And we've done a lot of things in that release to not only be innovative, but also continue to support the industrialization of IT. But we also have to think about that DevOps, that DevOps thought process, that innovative application development process. What do I need to do to do that automation? Because all applications have two parts, right? The stuff that you present to whoever consumes that application, and then the back-end automation to make sure that whatever that application requires based on data, based on transactions, whatever it happens to be, gets done as efficiently as humanly possible, is trackable, and also has the ability to be audited. We have taken that the time in in the case of Control-M and how we've continued to evolve the product to include a few other things for DevOps. Specifically, one thing we call application integrator. You know, the, the biggest problem with this workload automation thought process is that we have to interface to something. We always have to interface to something. We have to call a database. We have to talk to PeopleSoft. We have to talk to Oracle. We have to talk to Informatica, data stage. I mean, we can go all the way down the line. The fact of the matter is, is that the innovative IT structures are creating more and more applications that are smaller, more agile, and I need to also have the ability to interface to those. So we've actually put into Control-M version 9 and even in version 8 a component called Application Integrator, which allows you to create whatever integrations you wish to any third-party application that Control-M doesn't normally support in its normal course of development. We spent a lot of time with the DevOps folks, the application folks that are utilizing the typical technologies that are coming out for data mining. And if we think about Hadoop being one of those, it's one of those things where we have to think about how do we create a data lake? How do we mine the data lake for information? How do I automate that process so that I get information out of it at a consistent basis and get it to a specific output point, whatever that output point is, efficiently. And then we also have to think about the fact that the world is starting to transition away from the typical IT automation structures, meaning that you're not going to have a scheduling group very often now in innovative IT. You're not going to have people who are just dedicated to the automation. You're not going to have as many people who are the subject matter experts in those disciplines now. And we have to bridge that gap too. And we put into Control-M uh, a component called Workload Change Manager, which allows you to go out and actually give those application developers the ability to create their own automation, to create their job flows, and create them in a very standardized format so that the innovative IT speed can still be industrialized and industrialized at the speed of that application developer or that application development team or that DevOps team. These types of things have all been uh, continuously enhanced as part of Control-M and its continued foray into revolutionizing workload automation as a discipline. 
When we think about control in version 9, industrialization, and making sure that I have the ability to bridge the gap between the industrialized IT and the innovative IT applications that exist, a lot of those things are about making sure it's highly available, that you have the ability to share data between jobs, that you have the ability to create things globally in the case of things like calendars and things like that, the ability to uh, ask for work in any environment where I need to, and also have the ability to have specific control over how I deploy or how I upgrade those components of the infrastructure that need to be updated and kept to a certain level in the industrialized IT thought process. Control in version 9 has presented a lot of those more innovative techniques for managing high availability, data sharing between jobs, global calendaring, and things like that, all as regular functions of the product. And when we think about those things about Application Integrator, it's not just a software developer's kit where you go write some code. It's a collaborative mechanism between the people who are subject matter experts in the workload automation discipline and the subject matter expert in the application for whatever third-party pieces and parts they're using to enable that innovative IT application platform. I have the ability to make innovation easy. I go actually out to a website, instruct Control-M on what it needs to do to talk to whatever the application is, whether I'm using a, uh, a command line interface or a web service call or a RESTful API. It doesn't make any difference. I give him all the instructions, tell him what to do. Pick up from the end user how I need to navigate into that application how I sign into it, what port numbers I need to use, what kind of techniques I need to use, how I use the individual web service API or RESTful API or CLI calls to create the bridge between Control-M and that third-party technology, to create an object that that innovative IT application development person can use as part of the orchestration of their automation. It increases the value of Control-M as a platform, as an automation platform, to the application development teams. And nine times out of ten, application development teams are not only writing the individual code to support the innovation in the application, but they're also writing on the back end all of the back end processes that need to be done. A lot of those things I can take off their shoulders, driving time and cost out of the development of applications basically supercharging them with already available techniques to manage those mundane things that people are writing code for that they really shouldn't be. And the other thing about Application Integrator is not only the fact that you're collaborating between your internal groups, the application developers and the people who understand the automation discipline, but you also have the ability to collaborate externally. We put a hub out there as part of our community site that actually allows you to post what you're doing with a third-party application to the hub and also look at what other people are doing. Take in what they're doing. Customize it for your environment and deploy it in, that envir in your environment for whatever third-party applications already exist. And right now, there's there's almost a dozen things that have been posted out there from uh, uh, working with Teradata to more mundane types of things like Zip7 and some of the others. But ultimately, we continue to the thought process of collaboration between customers with that application community, that hub. So when we think about this thought process of application integration, working the DevOps thought process, making the bridges between the, the innovative application developers and the industrialized IT automation discipline. Application integrator becomes a very important part and a very important enabler in that thought process. And it really ultimately is there to deliver digital services as quickly and reliably as possible. So they build the code, you build the automation, and everything works together. Instead of they build the code, they build the application uh, automation, and then they throw it over the wall, and as people start asking all kinds of questions. This is really meant to bridge that gap.